Recently I reviewed this A3 Pro V2 gyro, 6-axis gyro from Hobby Eagle and I've been very pleased with the way that it performs. Hobby Eagle recently announced the release of the A3 Mini. How then does the Mini compare? How Mini is it? Well there is your answer. If we put it sideways it's probably even less than half the size of the original unit. When you look on Hobby Eagle's website, you may look at it and just go, meh, I don't see the Mini being very Mini. I think they're doing themselves an injustice by the photo showing it the same size, as clearly it is a Mini Mini. Indeed, if we compare it to my go-to gyro for small electrics to date, the Radio Link, it is not much difference in size there. If you put a case on that, I think they'd be pretty much identical. Today then, I'm just going to do a quick overview and look at the programming method for the new Hobby Eagle A3 Mini. Before moving on to the somewhat prosaic subject of programming, just a couple of planes that I use this type of gyro on. This is my little bonsai wing beaten to death and uh, to be replaced, a video coming soon, and that has the, the BIM D, the Delta version of the BIM. Clearly the kind of standard uh, gyro would be a little bit over the top. But this little guy will slot right in there, no problems at all. Perhaps the only issue being that the servo leads will stand upright. Just a thought, I've never seen them, but maybe something exists like a, a right angle adapter for servo leads? If you have any ideas, please leave me a comment down below. Very recently I put up a video of this uh, Predator model which I modified. This again has uh, a gyro to control it. In this instance the BIME A, the kind of fixed wing version. But once again there'll be no problem in slotting that little guy in there. Those are my sorts of applications then, things which I like messing around with uh, and, and modifying. Programming the A3 Pro is the old-fashioned button-pushing method, which, whilst it works well, uh, getting slightly long in the tooth myself now, waiting for the endless flashing and trying to press at the right moment, and then if it goes into a sub-menu, getting completely lost. Uh, sometimes that can be a challenge. The Mini adopts the modern approach with a USB adapter which you need to, to buy. This is available in various different kits with or without the cables and the adapter. It can also be programmed using a programming card. I've never actually tried that myself, but that is another option for you to explore. These little adapters are the same ones that come for the A3 Super, which is programmed in a similar fashion. Let's move across to the computer now then, and I'll show you the screens. I'll provide links down in the description to where you can download the configurator file. But very straightforward to install. Just going to plug my USB adapter in now. We get a sequence of lights on the A3 Mini and then it goes into a flashing red LED. Nothing really else to worry about at this point. In the configurator then, down at the bottom of the screen, we can see the COM port which is assigned to the USB device. And there's a pull down there if you have multiple devices. We'll connect back to our COM5. Once we have that, we can click connect. And it communicates with the gyro. All the values here then have been retrieved from the gyro itself and it, at the moment it's in its factory settings. Obviously there's an awful lot to go through on these screens. That is not the purpose of this particular video, this video just being an introduction. Suffice it to say we have these tabs along the top here to be able to select our wing type in that flying wing or V-tail or standard. The orientation that you're going to set the gyro in the model 
heading direction is always the same, the red arrow on the unit. However, you can put it face up, down or left and right and then select the correct mode here. Receiver type is selected here. Uh, one of the advantages of the A3 Mini is the multiplicity of protocols that it supports for its receivers. You could also connect it via PPM should you wish. Not being a Spectrum guy, I have no idea what the DSM binding's about. But in here we can see our channel mappings and if we had a receiver connected and the transmitter, we could wiggle our sticks and see these various values move. You can change the channel assignments should you need to. Servo again, you can change the endpoints and provide sub trims and things in there. Importantly, the sensor. In this window, we have a real time view of both the gyroscope and the accelerometer outputs. If we look down the bottom of the screen at the roll and the pitch, for example, if I tilt the gyro, we can see the roll rate changing and negative in the opposite direction. And similarly in pitch, we can go that away, nose down, and positive, nose up. Now we can see that everything is working. Both the gyroscope and accelerometer are calibrated at the factory. However, if you think that they're off or you have some special need, you can go in here and set the calibration or offsets. Going back to basics then, once you've made your changes, probably I would do this on exiting each of the tabs, we can write the configuration back to the gyro. Once we're done, we can close. Before closing, another trick that you can do, which is going to be very useful, I believe, is up here in the device you can save your configuration it saves it as a .dat file so you can name that therefore if you've spent some time setting up for example a delta configuration you want to use that again as a base for other models you can certainly save that and then when you get your new gyro you can open or read the configuration in and then write it to to the gyro that then is all I have for you today, a very basic overview, but a heads up, the A3 Mini I'm going to be setting up, I think, first in a Delta configuration. There'll be another video coming along soon. Thanks for watching.